Welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I'm Alexandra Jameson, your hostess, your life and health coach in your pocket, in your phone, in your ears. Thanks so much for spending time with me this week. I know you got a lot on your plate and a lot of podcasts to choose from. Well, this show goes out every week. We've been up and running for four years. We've got some great content, some inspirational and motivational stuff to help you move forward and get unstuck. And this show is a labor of love. It comes from my heart. It was, you know, probably born from the seeds planted by my own mom who had an organic gardening radio show for 10 years when I was a kid out of Cabo in Portland, Oregon. I used to go down to the station with her every weekend while she would record live broadcasting her show about organic gardening out to the great Northwest. And it was such a very cool thing to witness as a young kid. And I remember my mom every year having to go out, pound the pavement and find sponsors for her show, gardening centers and different places, bookstores. I remember Powell's Books was one of her early sponsors, which was so cool. And like my mom and all public radio and many podcasts, we put this show out by finding funding, finding advertisers, and asking our listeners to help support us. So if you would love to support the show, we would really appreciate your time, your dollars. We've got a Patreon page up. You can go to patreon.com. Her Rules Radio and enter in if you want to support us with a dollar a month, five dollars a month, whatever works for you. We would really love your support. We appreciate it so, so much. You can also go on over to iTunes and leave a review. That also really helps other people find the show and helps get our numbers up there. So the sponsors say, all right, I'll give you some money. So today we've got an amazing deep dive for you. I'm going to be covering all the different ways that you can detox your life, how detoxing, cleansing, whether it's physically with food or emotionally with boundaries, how detoxing can help you discover who you really are and what's really important to you. It helps you preserve your energy, helps you grow, heal, do more, feel better in your life on every level, mental physical, spiritual. Stay tuned. And here's a word from our lovely sponsor. Today's episode of Her Rules Radio is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. And this is super, super fun. If you don't already know about it, it's a seasonal box that you get sent to your house with full-size beauty, fitness, and lifestyle products. They do these cool quarterly boxes and their spring editor's box is going to be awesome. I can't wait. I've got one coming to me in the mail as we speak. It has products like these eye masks and skincare products, a mug by Aisha Curry. How cool is that? All these celebrity fans are really into it. And normally that kind of thing is like kind of off my radar. But when I saw that Nikki Reed and Martina McBride and Bethany Frankel, who I went to culinary school with, by the way. Hey, Bethany, how's it going? You do not want to miss this box. It's really fun. It's like Christmas in your mailbox four times a year. And these boxes are just filled with really fun, super valuable goodies. Each box retails for $49.99, but always has a value over $200. So you get like, it's like getting it for a quarter of the price. And if you go to fabfitfun.com slash rules, then you get 10 bucks off right? Your first box is $39.99 instead of $49.99 and you get over $200 worth of stuff. So just go to fabfitfun.com slash rules and get all these goodies. So here are some of the goodies in the current spring editor's box. A deep conditioning mask from Briogeo, free people starry eyed travel eye mask. By the way, i could have totally used that on my last trip. Had all these super crazy early 
flights that just totally wreck me. I really need a travel eye mask. Thank you. Can I go back in time, please? The Rachel Pally Clutch. You get a clutch and tart double duty leave your mark eyeshadow palette. It's just, it's fun stuff. If you're the kind of person that loves to go to those makeup stores and buy a bunch of stuff, you're going to get all the things that you already love, but it's a huge surprise. One of the other items that you usually get is some kind of fashion item. And when I saw that they have Michael Stars as one of their fashion lines that it gets included, Michael Stars is my all-time favorite t-shirt line. Fave, fave. The nicest, softest, best-made t-shirts from Michael Stars. You might get one of those in your fab fit fun box. So go to fabfitfun.com and use the code rules and you can save 10 bucks off your first box, making it only $39.99. Also, you know, a fun gift for anyone. So go check it out. Last time, fabfitfun.com. Use the code rules and get 10 bucks off. All right, so today we're talking about detoxing your life and your body to discover more of who you really are. And this is a topic I went into in a lot of depth in my book, Women, Food, and Desire. And if you haven't read the book, you can go and get that at Amazon, your local bookstore, your library, Women, Food, and Desire, best-selling book, came out a few years ago. And, you know, I'm really... I'm really inspired by my own journey of detox and by the women that I've served as a coach over the years. Now, the word detox, it's a very complicated and somewhat scary one for a lot of us. Before I came to understand the real power in using detoxing or maybe use the word cleansing, I used to teach a program called the Cravings Cleanse. And before I really understood the power in using detoxing as a cornerstone for breaking bad eating habits or transforming eating habits and establishing a healthy, relaxed relationship with food, I had a pretty limited understanding of what the word actually means. And, you know, like a lot of people, whenever I heard the word, my mind would draw up a mental image of some poor soul huddled in a dark corner, sweaty, scared, feeling really, really deprived. Even just hearing the word would fill me with a sense of ugh, ugh, like ew, icky dread, this feeling of somehow being at risk of somehow spinning out of control as though if I wasn't careful, then I might find myself in some lonely, desperate place. And I was thinking about detoxing only as it relates to helping people unhook from serious life-threatening addictions. And back in the day, before it became something of a badge of honor, at least in the celebrity world, to go through a formal period of detox, there was a lot of shame around the idea of detoxing. You know, people assumed that those who had to detox were flawed in some way, or they were using it as an excuse, an escape, or that they suffered from a lack of willpower, or they didn't have enough personal conviction. It's it's like a moral failing. Uh, That's not true. Detoxing was thought of as a choice of last resort, like this hard line option that had to be taken or your life would be over, right? You're on the edge of losing everything. And when I was younger, that's certainly how I thought about it. But then something really awesome happened to me when I was in my 20s. And when I say awesome, I mean in the old school biblical, like, wow, filled with awe. I found out that detoxing, and that's like a methodical freeing of my body from the food substances that were causing me harm, Detoxing actually made me feel the opposite of desperate and out of control. And I learned to my great delight, I must say, that detoxing gave me back my power, a sense of self, a sense of control, and most important, it gave me back my health. My own transformative experience with detoxing was so profound that it led me to my life's work that I'm still doing now, what, 17 years after my first detox. And what I discovered is that detoxing from certain foods, also from certain behaviors, and from certain emotional states, yes, detoxing from these things gave me the space and freedom to establish a new 
vastly improved relationship with my body, with my food, with my soul. When I was no longer pinned down by foods that didn't nourish me, my my love of life, my zest for life returned. And I was able for the first time, really, to tap into my true desires and needs, what was underneath, you know, the foundation. And as it turned out, being jacked up on sugar and caffeine was not what I actually wanted. Surprise, surprise. Being tired and sluggish because I was eating food that brought me down was not what I wanted. What I wanted was to feel at home in my body and at ease around food. And detoxing is what brought me there. And it's, it's not just about losing weight. And it's not even just about energy and focus. Although all of those things are usually part of the package when you detox. But it is that sense of self, that grounding, that centering feeling that you have when you are free from the distractions of the toxic foods and ways of thinking and emotions and even relationships. When you are free from those things and you realize that you have space in your life because those things are no longer occupying great swaths of your life, that is the place from which you can begin to create the life you actually desire. So I learned that detoxing is a major feature in many spiritual traditions, right? This is nothing new. Almost every religion has a ceremony or fasting ritual from Christian Lent to Muslim Ramadan, Jewish Yom Kippur, to indigenous vision quests that add medicinal plants like peyote and ayahuasca to their rituals. Detoxing is a proven and sacred, to many people, means of self-discovery and healing. In traditional Chinese medicine, detoxing is used to eliminate toxins and restore mind-body balance. For many cultures, a fast or detox is an annual spring tradition. It's a ritual used to light up and release the heaviness gained after the long, dark winter. Detox is straight up cleansing and elimination of anything that may be harmful. And this includes letting go of foods that weigh us down, inhibit our mobility, cause inflammation, hinder our thinking and clarity, or in any way keep us from feeling free and at ease. And again, it's not just about the foods we eat. It's the way we think about food that we can detox from. It's the way we think and feel about our bodies. It's the way we allow ourselves to get emotionally entangled in other people's dramas. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of detox. So let's talk about breaking through. Using a mindful process of detoxification, especially where food is concerned. Using a mindful process is anything but an option of last resort, okay? This is not something that you have to wait until you're hitting bottom. Totally on the contrary, I believe that anyone who has the self-esteem, the self-love, the courage to consciously refrain from eating any food that they believe or suspect is not helping their bodies function optimally are some of the most powerful people on the planet. I am, I am not kidding you especially with the complicated, complex relationships we women have with our bodies and food. When you endeavor to take on one food and take it off your plate, that's powerful. Detoxing, it can be like skydiving. It takes a leap of faith, a true belief in your ability to take care of yourself and the courage to know that you can and will survive you will survive. I will survive a short time, or if you choose a long time, without a certain food or substance. Okay? It is a belief. It is trust. It's a leap of faith that you can live and survive and even thrive if you don't have sugar for a week or coffee or dairy or gluten. We'll talk about those foods more in a minute. Detoxing can level the playing field and allows your body to reset at a neutral, clear, clean point, so that when you do add foods back in, you are able to really experience how your body reacts to them. This is a totally different way of engaging with food that the dietary industrial complex 
has not taught. Okay, the goal is to eliminate foods that you identify as harmful for a while or for good, right? Depends on your goals. But let me be clear, when I use the word detox, I am not talking about harshly banning certain things from your diet, and I'm definitely not advocating engaging in any kind of deprivation just for deprivation's sake, all right? Detoxing is about consciously taking specific things out of your diet for a while and replacing them with things that help you get over the hump so that you can then precisely assess how you feel when your body is no longer dealing with that particular food. Detoxing is its simply a, a technique. It's a tool to use to get clarity about how different foods make you feel. That's it. Detoxing allows you to strip away all that is non-essential so you can find out who you really are and what you are truly made of. This is such an important distinction that I think it's worth repeating. Detoxing is about discovery, not deprivation. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Detoxing is about discovery, not deprivation. And that's a mindset. That's a choice. It's not about self-denial. It's not about self-abuse. It's not about punishing yourself. In fact, when you do it with the right mindset and intention, a detox will bring you closer to yourself, closer to what you really need and want, rather than pulling you further away from the good stuff. That's also why there is no detox diet that is right for everyone. The gift of detoxing is finding out for yourself how your body feels when she is freed from highly reactive food substances. Detoxing is about clearing things up. It's about uncluttering your palate, right? Cleaning your taste buds, your digestive system, your mind, your heart, your circulatory system. It's about peeling away the layers of static, of noise that block you from being really able to hear what your body wants you to know about yourself. It's meant to allow you to tune into your most authentic desires. It's about stripping away the things that are keeping you stuck. And detoxing is above all about finding freedom, especially freedom with food. I know that sounds pretty bold, but that's really what I have discovered in my own work personally and in working with women over the years as a coach. And detoxing truly can be a spiritual experience. And, and again, that's a mindset choice. When I went through the life-changing detox in my mid-20s, not only did my body go through a huge transformation, but my psyche and my soul were also radically altered in some pretty profound ways. And, you know, that's, that's pretty inevitable because once you lay down the crutches of things like caffeine, dairy, sugar, and alcohol, <laughs> and gluten, and corn, and soy, and the other things that I stepped away from, just to mention a few, you you really amplify your own personal contact with the world, with reality. Your senses are heightened and your seeing, your knowing is brought into a really clear, sharp focus. When you strip away the stimulants, like caffeine, like sugar, when you strip away the, the veils, the things that make you feel heavy, like gluten or corn or soy or dairy, what you find is that the world is quite fascinating and you find that you're far more alive than you were before, right? You start to experience the world in a different way. And all of this may sound a little woo-woo or corny, but it's not. I remember waking up one morning at the beginning of my first cleanse, my first detox, feeling awake and refreshed and alert in a way that I had not experienced in a long, long time. Nothing in my external world had changed, yet everything within me had. I felt clear-headed and energized and eager to engage with my life. I felt ready to take really purposeful action. I felt like I, I just wanted to reach out and embrace my life full on, on so many different levels. And I did. You know, I made a commitment to myself to strive to feel that way 
ever since. And that's why periodically eliminating certain foods, you know, we, we can call that a detox, it's become an important part of my life. You know, just by clearing out those foods that were keeping me tired, sluggish, woozy, unclear, heavy, just by clearing those things out, I saw that the career I was in was not the place for me. I saw that the relationship I was in was not the place for me. And not only did it become clear I needed to make changes, but it became clear that I was capable of making those changes. That's the second most important piece. Not only do you get clear, but you see that you're capable of taking action, further action. And when we let go of the foods that we think we need, we come into direct contact with our feelings in ways that often, well, at first may overwhelm us. And so I always prepare my clients for the release of deep emotions that usually occur during a detox. And I'll be honest, to do a full-on detox requires a little bit of bravery because you're letting go of your snuggly food security blanket and letting go of anything we've grown to rely on for comfort is difficult. But once you do let go, even just for a few days, it's as if the dam we've built and have hidden behind for so long comes tumbling down and the onrush of feelings that this unleashes can be intense. It's important that we know this may be coming and that we surround ourselves with loving support and we go through this emotional part of the process with other people and some preparation. But this is where the gold is. This is where you can release so much emotional baggage that's been weighing you down and keeping you from really living. Detoxing allows you to get to the heart of the matter, the psychological and emotional issues that have been clogging you up, keeping your life stuck. Once you're there, you realize that you've been eating to keep these blocks locked up. And now without food holding them in, you can release them. And this kind of profound purge builds incredible trust in your own body. One of the feelings that may emerge when you begin to unhook yourself from foods that you've grown reliant on is fear. Yeah, fear. This is the big one, the tsunami of all feelings. There's nothing like fear when it comes to activating all of our self-doubting, self-hating, self-sabotaging ways. And there's a lot of fear in us and around us when it comes to our bodies. When we're standing nutritionally naked in front of our fears and doubts, when there's no sugar to hide behind, no caffeine jitters to mask the terror, we have to be willing to sit with the discomfort that fear brings and find our way through it. We have to be able to rely on ourselves and not some artificial additive or sweetener right? One of the biggest transformations that takes place in detoxing is releasing that fear and finding that what lies behind it is deep, reliable resilience and strength. And this is, to my mind, the greatest gift detoxing gives us. Finding the innate strength to take charge of our diets, to take charge of our health, our bodies, our lives, and well-being in super powerful ways. What I've come to realize is that fear is actually the harbinger of good things to come. Whenever I decide that I'm going to take the actions I need to in order to take better care of myself, whether it's, you know, deciding to have that difficult conversation or foregoing a glass of wine so I feel good the next day instead of tired, or holding off on eating refined sugar until my friend's birthday next month, I know I'm on the right track when a sensation I used to identify as fear kicks in. For me, this feeling is highlighted by a surge of adrenaline, this kind of tingling that courses in my chest. And I may find my voice shaking when I make that hard call to not indulge, or I may feel a moment of resentment when my dinner companions clink their wine glasses while I hoist my sparkling water. But always, without fail, I feel empowered and more alive when I've taken these powerful self-caring actions on behalf of my body, 
right? When she tells me what she needs and I acknowledge her and stand up for her, she honors me with taking extremely good care of me. When I ignore her, when I ignore my body, she tells me exactly what's going to happen if I ignore her, right? (laughs) We know what's going to happen. And then we blame her. We blame our bodies because we didn't listen to her. I think we've got it backwards. So detoxing allows us to build the foundational strength of self-regulation and feel beyond the immediate itch or craving to see down the road so we can live with planning and purpose and not simply reactively. Once we let the fear of what deep clarity means pass through us, we find that we're on much firmer ground and that our relationship with food is radically altered. This is why I encourage you to approach any kind of detoxification as the noble act that it is. When you approach a detox with true self-respect, you will find that the detox takes on the qualities of a great adventure and that there is deep pleasure to be had in this kind of experience. Healing yourself through detox expands your capacity for living. There is nothing passive about deciding to detox. It's always a proactive choice, a conscious reaching out for something better. It may be motivated by a reaction. For example, the realization that you want to stop feeling bad about yourself because you have sugar and candy every day, or you want to stop feeling so tired, stop feeling so cranky. But that moment of reckoning, that moment of self-awareness where you decide to step into action, that's when you realize that you can do this and that by giving something up, you have taken a warrior's first step. Deciding to detox means you are committed to cleaning the slate and calming the mind and body so your life can grow. Now, one of the things I teach all of my clients, and by the way, my clients are driven, passionate, heart-centered, highly intelligent, successful women. These are women who know a lot about a lot of things, and yet they feel chagrined. They feel shy. They feel embarrassed that they are looking for help with food, with diet, with body. So as with all things that I teach, I really believe that you must approach detox with gentleness. One of the aspects of the way I work that most surprises my clients is that I am not a believer in the benefit of banishing any food from your diet for the sake of calorie restriction. Nope. Not only would that be antithetical to most scientific approaches to real food and real nutrition, but it's really overreaching on my part. I am not against any food per se, except high fructose corn syrup. It's the only food I think no one should eat ever. (laughs) Okay, so I'm not against any other food besides high fructose corn syrup, and I have no problems with people wanting to keep sugar or gluten or salt or any other trigger food in their diet. Listen, as I see it, the goal of detoxing is to experiment with foods that cause the most problems for most people and see how you feel with and without them. I see it more as a period of deep personal experimentation, a chance for you to really get a specific handle on how certain foods make you feel. And if at the end of your detox from a particular food, you decide you want to reintroduce the food, then you should. No one's going to scold you, especially not me. The whole objective of my work is to empower you around food so you know what you need on an ongoing basis. Because there will be times when sugar and alcohol are fine, and there will be times when they are not. And I'm not going to be there sitting on your shoulder the rest of your life telling you day in and day out what you should and shouldn't eat. Detoxing is an essential tool for you to get to know you on a deeper level so that you can make ongoing healthy changes, healthy choices for the rest of your life and not have to look outside of yourself anymore. It's about learning to trust yourself. Here's another cool thing about detox. It's really an amazing healing tool. The benefits 
of healing through detox are really numerous. In fact, in my very first book, The Great American Detox, I detailed the eight-week process that I created to help heal myself and Morgan after we made the movie Super Size Me together, right? He ate nothing but McDonald's for a month, got super sick, and I put him on this specific eating plan to help his body repair from eating nothing but junk food for 30 days. Caveat here, I recommend none of you ever do that. (laughs) But for now, for today, let me just run through some of the most obvious health benefits of what a simple detox can do, even one that's just a couple weeks long. So when you take away any food that is known to mess with your metabolism, with your, you know, with inflammation, especially, I have my own list called the toxic six sugar, which includes alcohol and artificial sweeteners, caffeine, dairy, gluten, corn, and soy. So when you take those away, you give your vital organs, which of course includes your heart and brain, a chance to rest, to rejuvenate, to calm down. A lot of these are very inflammatory foods. So your whole body will just kind of settle as will your brain. We all know what can happen to your liver when you tax it too much with alcohol. It becomes diseased, unable to do its job, which is to eliminate toxins from your system. So just think what giving your liver, your kidneys, your intestines, and your thyroid, and your circulatory and your nervous system, what would it be like to give all those things a break, even just for a couple weeks? What would it do for your overall health, your energy, your focus, your outlook, your mood, your digestion? You could quite possibly totally radically alter your health. I know I did the first time I detoxed and I have whenever I have detoxed since then. And I have seen hundreds of clients and friends do the same. I have led probably over a thousand women through a detox, not even including all the people who read my books. And recently a client of mine went through a six week detox with me and told me she no longer had migraine headaches for the first time in 20 years years. And I've had people tell me that chronic heartburn has gone away, acne, like really cystic acne, lifelong insomnia, night sweats. The list of health benefits that detoxing can bring is really dramatic. And research scientists do know that a healthy, well-supported detox can also promote more efficient elimination. Yeah, we all know how transformative a proper poop can be, right? When your system is struggling to offload processed food, salt, refined sugar, countless additives and chemicals, it cannot do the important and subtle work that she was designed to do. Detoxing tends to correct problems like constipation and improve kidney function. And, you know, those refined gummy foods like gluten-laden processed grains and dairy products are removed from your diet for a little time. You can see some really great things happen. So a lot of my clients have reported that it jumpstarts weight loss, strengthens your immune system. You know, I've had clients who used to get sick like once a month, no longer getting sick, those sinus infections gone, those little colds, mental focus. Oh my gosh. Getting out from under the fog inducing foods does the brain a world of good. When you lighten the burden on your body, you free up your mind as well. And it definitely increases your overall energy, generally improves sleep. And when you're not burdened by lack of sleep and a sluggish metabolism and kooky hormones, your energy levels can really, really blossom. So one of the nice things about detox is it helps you look at your habits. And when you eliminate certain foods from your diet, even temporarily, you may be breaking a habit that you've had for a very long time. And I find this to be really true when people take caffeine out of their diet. They realize that after just a week, it may be the first time in years they've gone for more than 24 hours without a cup of coffee or soda or tea. Unhooking yourself from caffeine can be one of the most liberating choices you can ever make. I have had clients tell me, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I've gone without coffee for a couple weeks and how much better I feel. That's a, that's a scary one for a lot of people. They're like, Alex, you're not going to make me give up coffee. I don't make anybody do anything. I really invite you to get clear about what it is you want and what you suspect might be standing in the way between you and what you want. 
So let's talk about Tracy. Tracy is a client I had, and when I first met her, I thought she was a total rock star. She was super stylish, very hip. She gave off this air of real worldliness, but she had called me because she was not finding the time to work on her writing and photography, and she knew she needed to figure out what was blocking her. So she asked me to walk her through and support her, coach her through a detox, where together we would look at the toxic six, right? Those six foods, gluten, corn, soy, sugar, dairy, and caffeine, and see which one of them might be causing her to feel so shut down. And she was really eager to start because she was feeling really lethargic and tired and constipated and bloated. Blech. Right? It's tough to think about being creative when you just feel bleh all the time. All she needed was a notebook and some willingness, and we were good to go. So we planned this straightforward six-week detox, where each week she would eliminate another of the toxic six from her diet and see how she felt. And we began week one with dairy. And since Tracy's belly was bothering her and she was prone to a bit of acne, I had a suspicion that she would feel better right away. And she did. When we got together at the start of week two, her skin was noticeably improved and her belly had relaxed quite a bit. The bloating was down, the acne was going away. During week two, we eliminated sugar along with the dairy and Tracy had eliminated alcohol from her diet years earlier, but sugar was still a big part. Now, in my family, you're either an alcoholic or a sugar addict, so they can definitely affect your body in similar ways. So getting off the candy and the ice cream and the baked goods, which was her serious weakness, you know, I suggested she get some tangerines, lots of organic grapes, blueberries, have raw almonds, raw macadamia nuts around. And this way she was getting doses of sweetness and healthy fats without the corrosive side effects of sugar. When we met again at the start of week three, Tracy told me she felt more energized and more focused at her publishing company where she worked than she had in, she couldn't remember when she had felt that good. Now she wasn't perfect. She said, I slipped a few times, but that's okay. She had reduced her sugar intake by about 80%, if not more. And she had also started taking regular walks in the evening so that she would be less likely to binge. She would go by uh, this cute pet store and look at the puppies in the window She'd get herbal tea, herbal iced tea from the cafe and take a walk in the park. And I loved knowing that she had added this beautiful coping skill because she would need it for week three when we tackled caffeine. (laughs) Tracy said, I didn't think I could survive without coffee. I knew she could because none of us is born needing coffee, right? Coffee is not a need. It's something we, you know, get kind of addicted to. And by day four of the caffeine-free zone, she was flying. She was doing great. She said, it's crazy, Alex. I have more energy, but it's this calm energy. It's not like that jittery, static, cuckoo caffeine buzz. (sighs) I'm so happy to hear that. And she just, she was way more happy in her body, but way less happy at work. So we talked about it. And it seems like Tracy was on a team that was designing a new website. The people she worked with were not giving her the credit she deserved. She was overworked. You know, the the work she had put in on the project was being minimized. And her kind of greedy colleagues were jockeying to take credit for her work. And she was just really disheartened. And, you know, I was sad to hear it, but I wasn't surprised. This is often what happens when we get out from under the side effects of toxic foods. When we're no longer hiding behind the brain fog and behind the discomfort in our bodies, the truth of our lives emerges. And that's what was happening for Tracy now. By week four, Tracy was nervous because she was suddenly craving sugar again, but she was able to see that it was a normal reaction to her needing to take some serious action around her unhealthy work situation. She said, I get it, Alex. I want to drug myself with sugar so I won't have to deal with work. He's like, yes, that's it. And then she said, look, I know we, we talked about it. She said, I can do this. I feel like this is worth it. Like I'm worth it. And over the next couple of weeks, she eliminated gluten. She was having a much easier time. with. And when I saw her again, In our fifth or sixth week, she was wearing her super favorite, super skinny jeans. She was so proud. She was feeling so good. 
she was really finding her way through the cleanse. And she was finally speaking up to her team, telling them that she wasn't happy. She was making progress at work. She was feeling really strong in her body. And Tracy is a great example of the emotional benefits of detoxing. How giving our bodies a break from toxic foods has the added benefits of loosening the emotional armor that we've locked ourselves into, right? The release of stuck toxic emotions is another reason why having a kind and compassionate support team, having a coach in place is so crucial when engaging in a detox. I know from my own experience that like most things in life, it's much better not to do this alone. Now, there was another client, Gail, really attractive woman in her mid 40s. She always wore this like tight ponytail. She would work at this computer screen. And, you know, I was seeing her for the first time on Skype. And I love technology. I love that technology allows me to connect with clients all over the world. And Gail was calling me from Israel, thousands of miles away from me in Brooklyn, in New York City. (sighs) So Gail connected with me because she was feeling really, really healthy in her body a while ago. But she found herself, she's a working mom, two kids under the age of 10, And they, her kids were starting to act out when she was on the road for work. She'd get checked in, get to work, and she'd find herself, she was acting out. She'd find herself eating in her hotel room at night when she was lonely and feeling stressed out and disconnected from her family. And I remember her telling me that this confused her because she actually looked forward to the time alone, this time to recharge, get out from under her mommy duties, even if it was just for a night or two a month. So we we dug into her feelings of loneliness and worked on strategies to help her take advantage of having a big bed to herself and a room with blackout curtains. And I also helped her go off menu with room service and order healthy, nutritious meals for herself. And what a difference a year had made in the way she approached her on-the-road self-care. Now, after doing all these things we talked about, she lost 20 pounds. She was so happy. The weight came off gradually, and she just didn't stress about it. It just sort of happened, which is so fabulous. You know, colleagues were asking her if she had had work done, like her skin looked so well, which is great. And she noticed that as she was feeling better and she had been taking better care of herself for about a year, the toughest part of the last year had been navigating her relationship with her mother. And she had to have a really tough love conversation with her that Gail said she'd been needing to have her whole life. So when Gail first started a six-week detox with me the year before, her mother had emerged as a surprisingly non-supportive part of Gail's inner circle. This not only disappointed Gail, but it really hurt her. Her mother seemed determined to sabotage Gail's efforts at eliminating unhealthy food from her diet. And she belittled her. She was making fun of her efforts to eat more cleanly. And during the second week of the program, she asked me on the group call for some guidance about how to manage this. I told her I thought it might help if she asked her mother if she had ever been happy in her body. And if so, did she have a loving, supportive network of people around her who helped her to achieve this? Did she feel as though taking care of her soul herself was a valuable way to use her resources? These were the same questions I asked my clients to ask themselves. Do you feel worthy to take the time and make the effort to feel as good as you possibly can? So it took Gail nearly a year to have this heart to heart with her mom. And the first time she tried to bring it up, they just fought, (laughs) okay? But finally, they were doing something far away from the kitchen, the kids. And so she just asked her, Gail asked her mom, Mom, do you love yourself? And this one question led to a whole series of conversations between Gail and her mom about how different their lives were, where Gail's mother was valued for putting all of her energies into taking care of her husband and children as a stay-at-home mom, Gail was praised for being so successful in the workplace. 
And Gail learned that her mother had struggled with how to love and support her daughter when her goal to become a successful businesswoman who did not rely on a man for her income was so at odds with how success was defined for Gail's mother's generation. Self-love was not in Gail's mother's vocabulary. It was for her and her generation taken as a sign of self-absorption, of not being devoted enough to those around you. And at the end of a few honest, loving, challenging conversations, Gail had a renewed respect for how selfless her mother had been. And Gail's mother discovered that she really loved and admired how incredibly independent her daughter had become. And Gail felt this kind of emotional growth would not have happened had she not detoxified her diet first. And she wanted me to know. And I was so moved when she shared this with me. She said, taking dairy, gluten, sugar, and caffeine out of my diet gave me the chance to get in touch with my body. And it's wonderful that I've lost weight and I've regained my energy and I feel so present in my life. But the big miraculous shift has been being emotionally strong enough to finally forge an honest, loving bond with my mother. And for that, I can never thank you enough. Hearing this from Gail confirmed what I knew to be true already. We shouldn't feel like we have to do this alone. And the more loving and supportive people we have around us, the more successful we'll be in cleaning up our lives. So here's an exercise I like to give my clients. Write down the five people you spend the most time with. It could be family, kids, coworkers. Look at the list and ask yourself how happy, motivated, open, and supportive these people are to you. Do they feel good about themselves? Do they make you feel good about yourself? Next, honestly evaluate whether you think these people is helping you move forward in your self-discovery process or whether they're holding you back. And finally, tell yourself the truth. Are these the people you want to surround yourself with? Are they really supporting you while you move toward fulfilling your desires? This exercise isn't necessarily about breaking up with old friends or not talking to your family members, but... It is about becoming conscious of the people in your life and whether or not they, like food, are nourishing you or weighing you down and holding you back. You may find that the people you spend the most time with don't really support you in ways that you need in order to move into a cleaner, more authentic way of living. In fact, you may discover that your current life is populated with people who are actually keeping you stuck or don't have the willingness to pursue their own deep desires. It may be time to do some house cleaning and bring in some people who will better support you as you go through this incredibly brave journey. I want to thank you for joining me on today's episode, this deep dive into detoxing your life. And if this has piqued your interest... I work with new clients off and on throughout the year, and you can apply at alexandrajamison.com forward slash private dash coaching. You'll fill out an application, and if it feels like a good fit, my team will be in contact with you, and we'll set up a time to talk about whether or not we're a good fit for each other to work as one-on-one coach with client. Again, that's alexandrajamison.com forward slash private dash coaching. We'll be back next week. Mwah.